Hey there, Wendy here with Jazzy Doodle Designs and welcome back to part two of our Off to Africa journey. So this is the first page that I've colored and we are going to be coloring this book to completion. So grab your polychromos and let's go. So where we left off was right here with our little radio and I'm just putting a couple of finishing touches on it here. Now, sometimes people ask me why I don't do all of these little things all at once, like with the trunk. And like, why didn't I do this little strip? Sometimes I choose to do them later on, just simply because I don't know if I want them to be silver, or do I want them to be gold? Do I want them to be brass? Do I want them to be leather? And the reason being is because it really depends on everything else that's colored in the picture. Other times, I have been known to forget things <laughs> and then have to go back and do them. But this isn't a case of that. I honestly didn't know. And I didn't know if we would want to tie in the silver from the clock. But I felt like we had enough with the lantern and the binoculars, the clock, um, and the radio that I felt like it looked better to just go ahead and make it part of the trunk. So I'm adding a little shading underneath that edge just to make it look like it's, it's separate from the trunk. Now this would be a good place if you want to add shiny things to make these little divots shiny either gold or silver in the end i chose not to add any glittery elements it's something that the whole time i've been curious about because i wasn't quite sure what to do with those stars it seems like a really good place to put some glitter doesn't it and it would be fun. In the end, I chose not to. Spoiler alert. <laughs> I guess I'm supposed to say spoiler alert before I tell you. <laughs> I don't think anybody is going to be crying that they heard the secret. Now, I debated on this bedroll. My initial thought was maybe this was denim. And so I kind of went with it and kept the using the blue tones like we did in the map. So for the bedroll, I opted for some tan tones. I just, I didn't feel like the blue, I felt like it would be too much. I wanted the little, the little wraparound thing to be a different color. So I chose to go with brown ochre, surprise, and the ivory. I felt like it made it stand out a little bit more. You could definitely blue, do blue stripes though if you wanted.
Okay, so just finishing it up a little bit here. Okay, so I decide here that I really didn't like the blue there. Now maybe you did. I don't know. I, I just felt like it looked weird and so I erased it the best I could and went in with this brown ochre. Tell me what you think. So now I'm moving on to the hat. The overall color of the hat will be ivory and then we'll go in with surprise brown ochre. I told you at the beginning there's a lot of brown ochre in here. Once again just kind of darkening up the creases where it you know is in kind of the back and along the edges, going in with the darker bistra color. Just adding little marks here and there just to kind of indicate um, maybe a little bit of color, but also just creases and things like that. And then blending it out. I saw here that I forgot the darker there in the back. I also debate a really ridiculously long time about what color to make that hat band. <laughs> I decided to deepen up the, the sides of this cup and the inside portion just for a little more visual interest. And then also to do the little picture on the cup. So just using a lot of the same colors that we've used in our picture, I just go in and add hints of color. I'm not spending a lot of time trying to get those little tiny details. I'm going to set this to music and I'll be back.
Okay, so here we're going to start working on our floor. I'm using little flicks, and here I'm putting a little knot in that is simply just a little circle with little half, like paragraph things around it. And then I'm putting in random marks with this dark sepia. Now, I sharpen my pencil to a really, really sharp point before I started. And the key to this is you want to do random strokes with the grain of the wood. So wood goes in a grain, like in a row. Now we don't want completely, you want those strokes to be in a row, but random. Does that make sense? So some of them longer, some of them shorter, some of them at the beginning of the piece of wood, some of them in the middle, some of them at the end. Now this brown ochre is going to be our main color. But if you notice, I'm still just flicking it. I'm not going over the entire thing. Then I go in with Bistro, which is not quite as dark as that initial dark sepia, but once again, making lines in the with the grain of the wood. But I am covering the majority of the pieces, making sure that there's space between my lines because I want all these different colors to make up the, the ultimate uh, final color of the wood. And some pieces are going to be naturally a little bit darker or a little bit lighter, a little more honey colored, a little redder. And each one of these little strokes makes that difference. By adding this burnt sienna, it's adding that redder tone to the wood. You can see the difference of those four slabs on the left versus these ones I've done to the right. But this is also doing a good job of tying together our boots and our trunk to the wood. Or to, yes, to the wood. So that the picture overall is cohesive. And once again, I'm adding a little more red to my wood here with this burnt ochre. Which kind of has almost an orange feel to it. But the key is to just keep those strokes in the same direction of the wood. So I wanted to see, I wanted you to see this in real time. I do the majority of my color longs in two times speed. You can always slow it down on your end by going into the gearbox, clicking on the little cog, and choosing playback speed. However, um, I just wanted you to see that I was going over it, but I'm still, even though I'm not doing the flicking motion like we would with hair, I am still making my strokes in an up and down motion going with the grain of the wood. If I were to color this point against the grain of the wood, meaning back and forth side to side, the wood it wouldn't look right. Now I'm using the dark sepia up by that trunk just to bring in a little bit of shading. Now the key to this, and I'm not doing a very good job here, is you want to bring that out a little bit randomly. You, you don't want it so random that your shadows don't look natural. But you don't want a, just a stark line either. So there's a fine balance there. And I'm really kind of going where those shoes might cast a shadow and where that trunk might cast a shadow. And all in here is going to be dark because between the trunk and the binoculars. Now I am placing a little bit of darkness there. Um, just because of the binoculars.
So I apologize, it looks like I'm missing some footage of me coloring um, the, the red hat band and <laughs> I thought I just missed the toothpaste and that kind of stuff. Basically I used the exact same red that I used for the hot air balloon. I did it in exactly the same way. Um, it's pretty basic coloring, just a simple red um, with the, the darker in the shadow. But I do apologize. Sometimes I think I'm recording when I'm not. It's really annoying on my end, and I'm sure it is on yours as well. You may hear Miss Ellie in the background. She has a bone and she's chewing it like her life depends on it. Because that's the kind of girl she is. Alright, I'm going to leave you to it again. We'll see you in a bit. So at this point I'm just touching things up, making little minor adjustments, and doing the finishing touches. Now one of the things I'm always looking at, like when I ultimately decided what color to do the hat band, it was because I had put that red in that hot air balloon and I just felt like we needed another color because, you know, we had a lot of brown ochre. <laughs> I personally like how it's turning out. I don't feel like there's too much brown. Um, I like earthy pages, so maybe it just appeals to me. But um, but anyway, that's how I ultimately decided on what to do with those colors. There, the sunglasses and the toothbrush, etc. <clears throat> so. Now I'm just looking around, seeing where I need to blend a little more, seeing where I maybe missed, because, you know, if you've ever watched a color along with me, there's always uh, the hair, the leg of a pet. <laughs> that sounds so terrible. But, like, if you're coloring a little animal, I might miss one of the little limbs, or I might, might miss... A flower or a piece of tile or something there's always something that I forget but basically I'm just kind of tidying things up and looking around and seeing so like I still haven't done that little segment on the curtains I haven't um, decided what to do with the stars so these are the kind of things that I'm looking at the page as a whole and deciding. So this good luck, initially my first thought was to keep it kind of an ivory color. 
but I kept it until the end. And in the end, I decided I wanted a little bit more of that red. And I really like that I was able to do that. And had I colored it early on, I wouldn't have that option. Excuse me. And maybe it seems a little weird. Maybe it seems like it should be green or something like that. But I really, I liked it red. So that was just the green color there, just going in um, to fill in that little hole. Actually, I think I started with the gray and then grabbed the green. So once again, just looking around, tidying up your little, your picture, and just seeing what, what do we think it needs. So here I'm putting the dark uh, sepia like I did in between the curtains. I'm just using them on the edges here, kind of as a base layer, so that when I put that green on there, it'll just naturally, excuse me, it will naturally darken the sides. Not all of my color alongs are this. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I'm exhausted. And so I apologize. I feel like I don't have a lot of energy. Uh, I feel like there's more music in these than you guys probably prefer. Or at least some of you have indicated that you much prefer the talking. I just really didn't have it today. So for that, my apologies. But I do hope that you've enjoyed the color along in general. I love sharing with you guys. And I've said it before. I have the best community on YouTube. You guys are just amazing. Now in the end, I decided... I wanted these stars to kind of blend in. I just, I don't know. I couldn't reconcile them with what I have already colored. I couldn't, I guess I could have done them more in an ivory. I will go over them with ivory to kind of lighten them up. But in the end, I just, I don't know. I preferred them to be a little more subtle but you definitely could have went in with an ivory there and had them be much lighter and a lot more um, apparent I just felt like they would become a little bit of a distraction this is already a busy page so that was just the decision I made but feel free to do whatever your heart feels like is the best thing for you. Now, once again, this is just tidying up, um, kind of getting rid of that tooth of the paper. I do go over the entire thing with a Caran d'Ache blender stick and just really fill in all of the tooth of the paper. In some areas, I don't go over it. For example, in the picnic basket, those red lines, you wouldn't want to use a blender pencil there. It's tempting because you kind of want to bring those colors out a little. Oh, I just can't even stop myself. Apologies. I guess I just need a nap. It's six o'clock in the evening <laughs> maybe an early bedtime is in order um, but anyway um, what I was saying is those lines in the picnic basket if you were to use a blender pencil on they would just smear and you would lose the stripe look and that's not really what I was going for there so you do you but that's probably there and I'm very careful when I do it when I use it on the picture I do use it on the picture but you have to be very careful and you might want to sharpen your blender to where you have a pretty uh, 
kind of a, a finer point. So you can blend out your colors with colors like I'm doing here or with the blender pencil. So I opted to put cream in these little dots. I am not filling up the entire dot. I don't know if you can tell that. At least not with the cream. That way I can go in with this darker yellow ochre and add it. So here, like I said before, I'm going in and just adding a little bit of ivory just to bring those stars out just a little bit. Not much. They're still, it's subtle, but it does lighten them a little bit. But it's not eye popping. It doesn't catch your eye the minute that you look at the picture. So that's going to do it for our first page in this book. If you like this kind of com <laughs> if you like this kind of content, please hit the like and subscribe so that you don't miss any of the other color wrongs I do in this book. Until the next time, take care. Thank you for watching another video from Jazzy Doodle Designs. If you enjoy adult coloring content, please consider subscribing. You can now find me on Instagram and Facebook as well. I welcome all comments and suggestions. Don't forget to like the video before you go. And until next time, take care.